is up everybody welcome back to kbn live we got our audio issues resolved we hope we've got ryan lambert and of course i am jeff malott we've got garrett morgan here with us and where we left <laughs> off garrett we were asking you how you got started in the sport of kayak fishing and uh some of the keys to your success throughout this season yeah man i'll give it the shorter version this time um uh, i got to drag it out so much but long story short i did some uh, fishing have a big boat for years. We got our tails wolf doing that. Um, learned a lot um, before jumping into the kayak world. Um, out of an academy brand kayak with two Shakespeare rods. Jumped into a local event on my home lake. Ended up winning it, and I got hooked um, from then on. Uh, just did the local thing the first year. Second year uh, for me was uh, last year, and I uh, learned a little bit about um, some of the national events and jumped in on some of those. Um, you know, ended up doing well in the first few that, that I did and um, have kind of just gotten hooked on it, man. It's a cool little hobby to do. It's something that, you know, having two kids, um, a wife, two car payments and a mortgage, like I'm not going to break the bank hauling a, a ranger around and paying for boat insurance and, you know, gas that thing up. So the kayak fit is perfect for me to be able to stay competitive and, and keep fishing and be able to still be, you know, financially responsible here at home. I can. Oh, uh, hell, this is going to be scary if Ryan's asking all the questions. <laughs> oh, shit. They didn't put me in the driver's seat now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's, let's start back at, at the beginning of this year. I first met you at the national championship uh, down in Louisiana. And, like, the <laughs> one of the first things I remember, your name was left off the list. Like, you were in the money and G Money – was not getting no money is that is that correct man you know i don't know what the deal is but that seems to be like an ongoing theme so you know even like the little bit of segment they did with me on day two apparently got cut from the live feed or something so it's like i'm i'm the rodney dangerfield of kayak fishing around here man no respect sometimes but yeah i had to jump in when i realized i got passed up during the check ceremony and I go find out what happened when I realized like, Hey, I should be, you know, around 23 or so. Um, and kind of jump in there and turns out they didn't have, um, that didn't have all the fish that I submitted calculated for whatever reason, but they fixed it, uh, pretty quick. Um, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. I did get paid for that event. So you, you've had a pretty good, you've had, it. well, I mean, yeah, yeah, I got to pay for it too, and that's all that matters, you know. As long as as long as money hits the bank at some point, exactly. You just won. Uh, what was it? You got you got third in the the FLW event out there. I did. I got third at Washita. Um, you know, it was a pretty cool event overall. Um, you know, still waiting on that check. So, um, you know, hopefully that'll come pretty soon. Um, so I've already my wife already spent part of it on an iPhone. In the mail, so. man. Heck yeah. All right. How was that? What would you think? I mean, obviously, August is going to be tough fishing, but I mean, like overall with the, the FLW stage and the experience, like how, how was that? Man, you know, it was cool. Um, you know, I was, I was thankful and appreciative for, um, you know, even having the opportunity to be on that stage and for that event to even take place. It was even better that it you know, happened here in Arkansas, although you know, the local trail guys that I fish with will tell you that I absolutely hate that lake. I hate it. Um, and the funny thing about it is it's my brother's favorite lake. He lives down there in Hot Springs. He fishes it a ton. I go visit him. He's like, dude, let's go to Washita. And I'm like, no, I'm good. Like, let's go anywhere else. Like, I go to <laughs> Hamilton, the Gray. Uh, I'd rather go to Lake Catherine before I go to uh, Washita. Uh, but, you know, I kind of dug in and, and spent a good two months preparing for this event. I actually didn't go to any trail events this year. Um, you know, from the beginning of the year, I knew that the FLW was going to be here in Arkansas. I knew that Hobie was going to be here in Arkansas. And that's kind of what I, you know, set my mind on qualifying for those events. And then spending the rest of my time just really trying to focus on um, finding the right fish for that type of event. And with Washita, I really felt like if you could find an average 16-inch fish, that you'd have an opportunity to win. 
I fish two events there, local events, and there's some good sticks in some of those events um, that are local there. Uh, I remember like two years ago, my boy Larry uh, Wisnant won it with like 71 inches, dude. And there was like four people that zeroed in that event. And so oh, I go, oh, yeah. So I go into, you know, the captain's meeting. I'm hearing people talking about, oh, we're on 18-inch fish, and it's going to take 168 inches and this and that. And I'm like, either I suck and everybody that lives in Arkansas sucks. You know, <laughs> or, like, I just don't have a clue, man. But, yeah. you know, it turns out to be about what I thought it would be. I mean, you know, if you were on those, uh, on a 16-inch average, you know, you were kind of going to be there in the top five um, or so. So it worked out the way I thought it would on a two-day two tournament. Yeah. So is it mainly school and fish, or what was the, what was the pattern out there? For me, it was school and fish. Um you know, and, and they fired up pretty early. And st man, I'll tell you what: in practice, those fish fed all day. I mean, the day of the tournament, that wasn't. I mean, day one was pretty good, but day two they kind of shut off. Um, but school and fish mostly. Although I had a secondary pattern, um, the fish in some different structure, um, just with a big worm. And uh, you know, the first day I, I wasted a lot of time trying that and didn't get a bite. And I'll be dang day two, you know, I catch my big fish running that pattern. And so then I'm like, well, I got this decision to make. Do I go try other, other spots I tried yesterday and catch fish? Or do I stay here and see if those school and fish are going to come back up? And I gambled. I left and got some other spot. My, my pedal drive broke, the little pin on it. Although I learned a valuable lesson. You know, you take something from every event, right? You know, take an yeah. extra pin, take a wrench, check all those things. I always take a wrench and an extra prop, but I never took an extra prop pin. Um, but, you know, so it is what it is. But Mark Pendergraph, who I fished with, you know, he told me, um, you know, those fish never really came back up in that area. So I was kind of at ease with the whole thing. Like, I didn't feel like if I would have even got back over to those fish um, that, you know, it would have made a difference. So I felt like I finished where probably I deserved to finish. Let me let me jump in there real quick. Watched your fish for you. <laughs> Go ahead, Jeff. No, I was going to say, uh, you said you fish with Mark Pendergraph. I don't know if these guys can hear me. I did a little audio check. Let me know if you can hear me. But uh, there's been some questions about people getting too close, people not you know respecting other people's water. I know you've had some instances on different lakes with that. How did you and Mark handle that? Because I always find out, I feel like communication solves a bunch of that. So it sounds like you guys must have worked that out before the day started. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Like, so from day one, when he rolled up at five o'clock, first of all, when you're in the middle of National Forest in Arkansas, you really don't expect anybody to come rolling up on one of those day ramps that's back there. Um, but when it was him and I realized it was Mark, I was pretty thankful because, you know, you know, it's a guy that can fish. You know, it's a guy that's that's cast checks. And he's going to give you your space and you're going to work together. And so we had no issues. You know, the, the couple of instances I've had is, you know, you, you roll into, you know, day three of the national championship and you fish the same set of trees, you know, pre-fishing, fishing day one, fishing day two, and no one's been in there that day. And, you know, someone shows up in the first five minutes of the tournament and starts pulling fish out of the trees you're at. Um, you know, you roll over and you ask them, Hey man, what place are you in? And, and they say 50th. I mean, you know, it, it's a little, yeah, it kind of ticks me off a little bit when you're, you know, sitting in the, in the top 10, um, you know, me, myself as an angler, and I even did this last year in our state tournament. You yeah, know, I remember I just, that. Um, what well, a buddy of mine was rolling to a ramp, good fisherman. And I pulled up behind his vehicle as we're going down this dirt road. Well, I know where it leads, at least the one ramp down there. And he was in, I think, the top three, and I was outside the top ten. And I called him on the phone. I was like, dude, like, you can have it. Like, I'm going to turn around and go find another spot. I mean, yeah, it's cool to cast a check, but if a guy's got a chance to actually win the event, to me, you get out of their way. Um, and I do that for anglers. Um, and so at the NC, I was, I was quiet. I didn't say anything. And that's usually how I am in the water. Um, but, you know, I kind of learned a lesson that day. Like, I should have spoke up. When that angler came in there, I should have communicated, and I didn't do it. And so then I, when I rolled down the Hobie, I spent a week down there pre-fishing, and, um, you know, I spoke up. And, you know, people didn't appreciate that. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm going to be fishing at Lake Washington in November, and 
you know, the folks that have something to say about it can come try to fish in or stay at the house. Yeah. Woo, put up or shut up, boys. You heard that. <laughs> so what like happened it. over there? At Lake Fork, there was another incident where you actually did have to say a little something. Uh, and on the water, I don't remember there being an issue, right? Correct. You know, really the, the deal is for the folks that were at the event, there wasn't an issue. You know, so you get folks that have never cashed a check in their life that want to jump on the Internet and try to get some sort of Internet fame and, you know, start running off at the mouth. And it's like, dude, you're not here. You don't know what's going on. Um, and so, you know, it is what it is. Well, the keyboards get hot. They trick yeah, you. Yeah, they do. Oh, um, I'm sure. <laughs> so, you know, you've been around and you fished a, a lot of different events, different parts of the country. Uh What's your thoughts on, on some of these larger events and where they're going? And, you know, do you feel like Hobie's kind of set a new new bar uh, for, for yeah. competitive kayak fishing right now since you fish both now? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I enjoyed the Hobie event. I'll tell you, the, the biggest attracted for me personally was 100% payback. Um, so, and I like the transparency that goes on with the Hobie events. Um, you know, AJ's pretty upfront about things um, as far as, you know, they're going to try to work with anglers. They're going to try to make sure anglers get credit for the fish um, that they've caught. Um, and like I said, at the actual event, everybody was cool. Everybody was good. I don't want to try to act like there was, you know, some sort of beef that's not there or anything like that. You know, I think we all had a good time down there at Lake Fork when it was all said and done. A lot of people caught a lot of big fish. Um, but the other piece of it is as an angler, you know, when you put in time pre-fishing and then you go to an event, like, dude, you're wore out, okay? The last thing I want to do when I go to a LinkedIn is listen to somebody talk for an hour and a half or two hours. And I think when you have an angler that's actually running um, a trail, they understand those kinds of things. And so they take that into account. And so things were run smooth. They were quick. They got you in, got you out. I mean, dude, I'm not lying. At the NC, between Tuesday and Saturday, I think I got 13 hours of sleep. I mean, I was making that many adjustments, whether it was, you know, one night, you know, I changed from 20 pound test down to 15 and then another night from 15 to 12. And it's just making all those adjustments every night. And you know, my mom, she lives not too far from uh, Shreveport. So I would drive all the way back to her house, you know, make the adjustments I need and then drive back to the lake in the morning kind of deal. But by Saturday, man, I was not trying to hear, um, you know, a, a whole lot i was worn out <laughs> i was ready to get it going so i think hobie's got that piece right uh, but i also get the other side of it of you know you got to make sure that you're taking care of your sponsors as well and um you know doing your due diligence with that piece uh, just from an angler's perspective you know you like things to be tight concise and kind of get you in get you out yeah now you know we're on kbn live and, and kbn is known for uh being unfiltered uh a lot of times we get the rap for being a KBF bashing uh, page, and that's really not the case at all. It's just when things happen. Uh, because, I mean, frankly, Ryan, you, me, Garrett, we're all card-carrying KBF members right now. We've kind of yeah. gave gave our time, tried to uh, give them the benefit of the doubt time after time uh, and fish the events and do what we can. But, you know, we've thrown a lot of money and time at it, and they keep – having the same hiccups every month, you know, with rules and fish measuring and uh, slow payments. So, you know, Ryan, Garrett, what are your thoughts on why the same things keep happening over and over again? Well, you know, myself, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have a why. I don't know what the, I don't know what the easy button is. I mean, obviously, you know, growing pains, that's, that's part of it. And KBF did get big fast, but it's been big. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, for me, I expect the, I expect the judging and the payouts to be much quicker, especially when Hobie comes in their first year of running uh, a series and, and they don't have these judging issues or, or, you know, the payouts are very timely. I, I just, I don't know. I, I know it's it's going to get better. It's going to get better. It's going to. But when's it going to? You know, like I feel like it's kind of a copy and paste. Like, all right, now we got it. Now we got it nailed down. 
I just want to see it happen. I want to see it, uh, you know, I want to see the, the judging stuff sorted out, especially, I mean, I, there were several events this, this season that, that had, had issues on, on fish judging. Um, that's that to me, that's something that if you're trying to get it to this level, if you're trying to do the, the pro deal, that's something that, that shouldn't be even on the table, especially not in multiple occurrences, especially not at the, you know, the event that you just finished Garrett. I mean, yeah, like that, that's something that shouldn't happen. That's the biggest stage that, that kayak fishing has ever been on. Like that's, that should be tight. It should be airtight in that, that respect. But I'll let you give your input on it, Garrett. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want to get too much into why, um, you know, I'll just kind of point out, of course I've been doing it since last year. And I think my biggest challenge um, which I will say, just I've never missed a check. I've always gotten paid out. I'm not going to say it was always when I wanted to be, um, but for the most part, if I've had issues, I've been able to pick up the phone and, and someone answers, and, and we talk through some of those things. Uh, I'll tell you my biggest frustration, though, as an angler, and, and that's what I'm really liking about Hobie is looking at an angler's perspective. And even with our trail here in uh, Central, we've tried to take and look at, well, what's best for anglers? Um but from an angler's perspective, what's been frustrating are the things like in the middle of last season, you go from having national events and you need two of those online for your AOY, uh, AOY points for the first half of the year. And then you change in the middle of the year and go to the regional. OK. And then you go um, even to the national championship where you're saying, you know, for months, the last day is going to be on the Red River. And then two weeks before the event, well, we're not going to the Red River. You know, that really jacks someone up as far as their pre-fishing and the time that they put in and the game plan they put in. And even with the FLW, I mean, we didn't get the boundaries for that event until, I don't know, the week of the event, it seemed like. Um, I had no idea the river was going to be open. Um, you know, I'm a river rat, dude. I love fishing rivers. I would have definitely spent some time on that river and tried to uh, maybe find a pattern there. Um, so I was just like to see more consistency. Um, like, you know, what we say we're going to do is what we're going to do and how we're going to do it, um, you know, as far as when we put out the boundaries is consistent from lake to lake. And there's not all these changes um, here at the last minute, because from an English perspective, you know, you're trying to formulate a game plan. You're, you know, doing your research, you're reading, you're looking at past events and things like that. Um, you want to be sure that you're putting your time in the right place. Um, and so. You know, I think that's probably been, from an angler standpoint, my biggest frustration. And at the same time, I'll say, you know, that organization has, you know, taken the event places where it, it, taken the sport places where it hasn't been. So at the same time, I am thankful, um, you know, for what they've been able to do. I've not been one to try to jump on KBN and, and just bash KBF. So, um, you know, I, I don't think that that's something I'll ever just be into into doing or. But, you know, at the same time, when I see that things could be done differently or done better, um, I support those things as well. Sure. And you know what I think happens there, Garrett, is uh, – and we kind of lost Ryan there. Hopefully you can connect back, but me and you will keep it going. Uh, is people try to get answers the right way. They send emails. They text. They yeah. send phone calls. Uh, and I think they don't get responses. And then that ends up being blown up on whether it's KBF or – KBF members only or KBN, uh, they feel like that's their only outlet. And that turns into, you know, some giant thread that that really, I mean, it needs to be said and the questions need to be answered. Uh, and that's just another one of those things you're talking about with transparency and frustrations that build when you can't get a hold of the people that you need to get a hold of. What are you supposed to do? Uh, you throw it out yeah. on social media, whether that's right or wrong, it gets answers at least. Well, and then I think the other piece of it is we're told as anglers not to put it out there on social media. And then you have folks from the organization are the first ones to like rebuttal to somebody that put it on social media. Right. And it's like, well, you know, like, well, then you have a rebuttal to something and then someone else wants to rebuttal to that. In my experience is, as far as reaching out to people um, directly, I've, I've been able to get a hold of them um, directly and have those conversations. Um, you know, at least get what I felt like was some sort of answer. Uh, but I know that's not been everybody else's um, experience, um, per se. But, 
you know, it definitely uh, festers, I think, uh, sometimes when, you know, you could just be open about a lot of things and, and cut out a lot of that drama. Yeah, and, and like I said, the, the transparency that uh, needs to be there and the, and the honesty about what's going on. I mean, we talked about it offline. Uh, a lot of people still haven't been paid from the FLW event. I don't think you have yet. Uh, those kind of things turn into a bunch of private messages where people are complaining or phone calls or whatever that doesn't need to be there. I mean, we've all tried to help KBF grow, uh, just like we're trying to help Hobie grow. Uh, and, you know, there's rumors flying that there's even more stuff coming next year, and we're going to try to help that grow because as anglers, I think you'll agree with me, Garrett, and the folks watching may agree. We just want to fish. We just want to go fish competitive events. And, uh, you know, if you'll run a Absolutely. smooth event, just get out of the way. Yeah, I, I think you want to go fish competitive event. Know that everybody's going to be treated equally and that it's an equal, fair playing field and that you understand where the money's going. You know, yeah. and I don't have a problem if, you know, 15% is going back to the organization or 20% is going back to the organization. Just tell me that that's what's going on. Um, you know, I, the transparency, I think, is um, the biggest piece because I get, you know, people got to make a living. People got to, you know, pay bills for things. I mean, it's not free to run a big organization like that. Um, there's upkeep, you know, that goes along that you have to pay for. Get all this thing. I, I think it's just what you said. It's the transparency. And I think the competition is going to make that better. So as we've seen, Jeff, as you know, locally here in the state, as you introduce more competition, like it just kind of raises the standard for everybody else. Like everybody else has to step their game up. That's right. I mean, you know, just, I think introducing turning X to um, some of the other trails um, or, or saying that, Hey, this new trail is going to do it. You know, you'll see other trails start to doing that, start doing that. And that only just kind of raises the standards and the expectations. And um, you know, I think it's been beneficial here locally I mean, we have, you know, several good trails uh, in the in the central area. You know, talk about kayak bass anglers of Arkansas, uh, kayak uh, anglers um, or kayak central anglers as well, Kaka, um, and then of course us here at NSKA. And you know, anglers here locally have several different options to go fish, and they're getting a good product at each option that they go fish. Um, and so I could see that happening on the national level where you introduce, you have Hobie, you have KBF, and let's just say that another big partner comes along. Well, whoever's the top dog, everybody else is going to have to step up to that level. Whatever they're offering, you know, whatever the payback is, or they get left behind. And that's just, you know, the great uh, America we live in. It's called, um, you know, put the product out there and let the consumer decide. That's right. And, yep. uh, you know, like I said, there's there's leaves rustling around that there is some stuff coming down the pipe. Uh, we all got our fingers crossed about that. And I think there'll be a lot more. I mean, Ryan, we're going to touch on Tourney of Titans before we get out of here in a little bit. Uh, but there's going to be a lot more standalone events come along too. you know, big opens and big uh, uh, one, you know, one time single events that, that are going to raise the bar as well. I think the more the more tournaments that come onto the scene, kind of the more options people have. Like you're not you don't have to tie yourself to one thing or another. Right. You can fill your schedule any way you want to. So whatever's gonna give you the best return on investment, which I mean, to be honest with you, that's that's what this is. You know, we're not out here throwing throwing up two hundred, three hundred bucks <laughs> for a tournament plus travel costs just to get out and have fun. I love seeing my friends, but I can go fish with my buddies for 20 bucks on the lake and, <laughs> and have a good time. Like when you're looking at these big tournaments, you're looking at qualifying for a, a prestigious championship, you know, where, where you really bust your ass to get in. And, and you're looking at, you know, what you're getting back in the, in the checkbook for, for what you're putting out. So I think, I think that's kind of, as these organizations grow and, and new guys come in, that's what you have to look at is what are you giving the angler back? You know, I think, uh, I know we had like, what was it? Gunnersville was like 161 people. So I, that was, that's huge. That's a huge event. Can you imagine, you know, having to beat 161 people and Jody Campbell, uh, got two grand for that for beating 161 guys. I mean, that's, and I'm not saying like that is, that's, those were published payouts and no, no one's questioning any of that, but, 
I hope to see that payout structure change for next year for the trail events. Uh, our Chickamauga event that Christine won, she beat 120 something people on it and took on two grand, then turned around and went and won five grand for beat 60 people the next week. Like, well, you know, I mean, hey, Brian, somebody's got to yeah. pay for those central turnouts, buddy. Appreciate you, buddy. <laughs> well, I can't. I can't help who shows up, but I'm saying if you're going to beat 120, 150 people, you better pay them for it. <laughs> That's right. you got to support those payouts over in, in Kansas, bub. Well, people want to see payout structures, too. Like, yeah. you want to know for these yeah. big, big events, you want to know your payouts. That Honestly, to be 100% transparent, that's why I did not fish Wachita. Like, my entry was paid for it. But I'm still going to spend 12, 1,500 bucks with hotels and bar tabs to, to get out there and fish for a couple of days. Like I know me. Uh, Don't forget so, about I mean, when, <laughs> when I didn't, when I didn't have a pay structure and you know, there wasn't boundaries announced a couple weeks out. Like that's not, I was off that weekend. I didn't have anything to do, but that's, I just can't in my head, I can't justify driving 10 hours in, in you know, going in blind basically. Right. Well, uh, with that, with all that being said, Ryan, you want to touch on Tourney of Titans? I know we got a late start, so I don't want to stay on here too long tonight. Yeah, so Tourney of Titans, uh, October 5th on Gunnersville. Uh, we're going to have the captain's meeting the night before, you know, kind of little introduction to everybody. We've got some big sponsors that have stepped up. I think uh, last word, I know Berkeley, uh, Abu Garcia, um, Mustang, of course, Native, uh, Sierra Nevada sending some beer down. My buddy Addison Johnson, he's a Nashville singer-songwriter up here. He's going to come down and play after the event. Uh, the plan is, you know, we're going to cut off fishing at like, I think uh, I think me and Steve decided like four. You don't have to be at the, the check-in until six. That way everybody can, you know, take a shower and, and come to hang out. Like I, we want everybody to, to hang out and have a good time and make this, you know, a social event. I know Jordan Lee's going to fish it. Uh, Jason Lambert is going to come out and fish I'm trying to talk, uh, talk Randy Howell and Justin Lucas into jumping in with us too. Uh, G man's got a wedding, but we're trying to get him to swing by, uh, after, after the wedding. So we want, we want people to have an opportunity, you know, for you to hang out and socialize with the guys that are doing this shit for a living, you know, that are top tier, you know, where I think where most of us would, would love to be in, in, yeah. <laughs> in the driver's seat on that front. But I mean, getting that kind of interest and that kind of spotlight on the sport is, is huge. And, you know, the more people we can get into it and the, the bigger companies we can get to take a look at it, that's, that's going to help us all out because, you know, at some point it's not going to be your entry fee dollars that are determining the payout. It's going to be these big corporate sponsors right. that put up money to run these events. So, I mean, everybody come out, have a good time. I, I promise uh, this, this is going to be a good one. It, it's going to be a, a, a good tournament. It's a great time of year and a social function for the guys that are coming to fish the Hobie. It's uh, two weeks after that. So uh, if you're fishing the Hobie bass open on Gunnersville, that's, that's some good pre-fishing time for you. I encourage you to, to fish both of those events. Um, but that's, that's frog swim jigs, swim baits. If you like throwing that stuff, that's the time of year to hit the G for sure. Is tourney of Titans a two day or one day? One day. One day. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know th- I told you the other day, it falls on the same day as our state championship, Garrett, because I was thinking about making that trip just to fish with all those, the, you know, those pro guys. And I've never yeah. been to Gunnersville. So, but it's on the same weekend as our state championship. Uh, but <laughs> with, with what they've got going over there, hell, I might make the road trip anyway. I don't know. Why Let's don't see. y'all just move your state championship to Gunnersville? Well, <laughs> that'd be all right. Uh, everybody even, road even trip. Even playing field, man. Even yeah. playing field. Ain't nobody seen it before. Now, yeah, I'm pretty sure some shit would get burned down here in Arkansas if we did. So. Yeah, it would. Them boys ain't going to compromise on that. You know that, Garrett. Uh, so, Garrett, what do you got going the rest of the year? I know you and I got the state championship coming up and some NSK yeah. stuff. Yeah, man, we're looking good. Looking forward to that. Um, you know, we've got a couple new sticks. Um, you know, you put that post up the other day. I give a shout out to my boy, Roy Grubb. He's going down to fish his first national event. Um, at Toledo this weekend, uh, but he's a good stick. We're sending some some good sticks um, to the state tournament from NSK Central. You know, uh, Bass Anglers of Arkansas always had some good sticks in there with with Corey Hopper and 
Steve Lee and, and some of those guys. And then we got, um, of course, Brandon Fink fishes with us and some other guys and um, Clint Wright or another good angler. And then you guys will be sending Cole Sykes down yourself and some of those guys. So that's going to be a really good local event for people to keep an eye on as far as, um, you know, Tourney X goes. Um, you know, we really get some good sticks out there. Oh, yeah. uh, but after that, I'm looking forward to, to TOC. Um, you know, I have my NSK Central Championships on Conway. Um, you know, normally I would say that I, I would feel pretty good about that event, but I've been out there three times in the last week and had a limit, so who knows, right? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, for those that don't know, you know, Garrett and I and uh, my buddy James Whitted kind of partnered up with another group to get the NSK Central Trail off the ground this year. We've got some good things going here in Arkansas. So, uh, and you know, the Arkansas have been out there laying the wood this year on the national trail. You know, yeah. Dwayne Beatty's been out there doing stuff. Garrett, you've been, you know, finishing real high in, in several different events. So, uh, I'm hoping by the end of this year, I can get my name up there somewhere. I've been struggling. I got to, I got to get right. I, gotta get I right. mean, that's just the thing, you know, I don't think that a lot of folks know, like you can go to some of these, um, events here locally in Arkansas and, you know, somebody you've never heard of because I don't fish national events, you know, may may put it on you pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty competitive. And I think that's been good, um, you know, here to kind of just look how the local trail can grow, um, you know, na national uh, competitive style anglers, you know. Right. I mean, that's what I came out of. I came yeah. out of a local trail. Uh, we're starting to see that more and more out of the central region. So I'm looking forward to see what the Arkansas anglers can do in a couple of years. Yeah. And I know the same thing over where Ryan is, that Tennessee group. It's just sticks for, you know, up and down the list. And there's several, Texas, same thing. Uh, oh, so, yeah. yeah, local trails are where it's at. And I think they could send guys to any tournament and do damage. So That's what sharpens your skills for sure. I mean, our, our local club, uh, just with us, uh, on Chickamauga, Gunnersville area, uh, uh, we get better and better guys that come out. And, you know, you get used to getting your head thumped every week you want to get better you know you yep. don't want to <laughs> you don't want to keep donating money to the big dog every week so uh the, the better people you can get in your local stuff the, the more it's going to help new anglers coming in because not no, only right. like you were saying earlier garrett like yeah. learning from people on on how to be successful on on those tough days on the water that's going to help them grow and then also that competition to push them to keep getting better that's something you really got to take into account yeah now, I'll tell you something else we've seen here in Central is, is Central Arkansas. We had, like, you know, one big boat guy that came over, and he loved it. And now all of a sudden you start to see more of them coming. Are you all seeing that in Tennessee where, like, you get one of them hooked in, and all of a sudden they bring three buddies kind of deal? Yep. A lot of guys are leaving the big boat scene to fish our local tourney stuff. And I love I love it myself. I fished, uh, I fished the big boat trail last year as a co-angler just to, you know, try to – try to see what I was missing and I didn't think I was missing anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we were fishing too fast. We were missing a lot of spots that should have been hit. And I was like, man, I, <laughs> this ain't for me. Well, fellas, I appreciate your time and I appreciate your patience tonight for everyone that jumped on here to watch. Uh, hopefully next time we jump on, we are, we are good from the jump and we don't have to struggle with this audio. Um, but Garrett, thank you for taking the time to get on here with us. And Ryan, yeah. I hope, uh, Hope your night continues. Uh, don't don't go too wild. You got to get up tomorrow. I don't know if you got to work tomorrow or not. But, um, no, I'm, we're going fishing in the morning. I'm okay. Going tomorrow. Okay. But uh, we'll get back on here soon. I know Ryan's got a few guests in the in the queue to bring on that are going to be pretty awesome if we can get them locked down. And hopefully we'll be we can back. We get our audio uh, cleared up. We'll be in good shape. Yeah, that's right. I'll get it fixed. I'll get it fixed. I'm going to go to work this week. But we're going to get out of here. And uh, as always, you can uh, – Catch this on the podcast here in a couple of days. And once again, thank y'all for, for jumping on. Y'all have a good night. Take it easy, folks. Right. Thanks for having us. Appreciate you guys. Sorry about the trouble. <laughs>